Okay, I've been getting a lot of uh, questions, inquiries, because I mentioned something about sacred sex. And people want to know about it because it seems interesting to them. Or they want a further explanation. And I already did a video on this, but I thought I'd do an, another one because Sometimes you leave things out, and it's been a while, and it's just good to go over it again. And it's like, just let me say from the very beginning that if you only knew, okay, because it's not really what you think it is, and a lot of people have this misconception about it, and so I'm going to explain some things with in a tasteful way, so it's up to you whether you want to get the kiddies out of the room or not, but I always do things in a tasteful way, and so it's sacred. So I wouldn't by any means think that this is something that you really need to get the kiddies out of the room, but I just thought I'd tell you that. Or maybe you should get them in the room so they'll learn, because what they learn in high school... Uh, <laughs> probably 10 times more graphic than this. This is really about yoga. This is about a spiritual practice. Tantra yoga. And I'm going to be showing you some illustrations just so you can get an idea of what it's based on. And I'm sure I won't be able to cover everything, but I can give you an idea of what it's like to have union or yoga between two people and also circulate energy and raise your consciousness while doing it. So it's a whole nother thing other than just the normal sex act. So let's start with that, that, uh, that term sex or sexual energy. I'm going to put a picture up here. This picture is of the chakras, spelled C-H-A-R-K-A-S, no, C-H-A-K-R-A-S, excuse me, on the body, and these are energy centers here. Now down here you have what they call the base chakra, okay? And there's seven chakras in all, ascending to the crown chakra up here right there and then the third eye throat heart solar plexus and the dantian but the base chakra is where the sexual energy comes from or the base energy would be another word for it, it doesn't need to be called sexual energy it's base energy Okay, so that's where the base energy or the sexual energy comes from. Now that base energy which originates down here in yoga or union or practice of yoga, and there's all different types of yoga, this is Tantra yoga. I'll get into that more later, but this base energy can be breathed or moved or energized and it will move up the spine okay sometimes it's called the serpent energy and that's the same s sign that you see the two snakes the caduceus on the the doctor's emblem with the sword and because they know about this stuff or do they half of them don't but anyway uh, it moves up the spine and over the top of the head in a circular motion up the head and then down the front of the body and then around back up down the head that's called circulation of the microcosmic orbit so in order to practice Tantra or sacred sex you have to know about these things and have practiced these things first and 
accomplished quite a bit of facility or degree of raising this kundalini energy up the spine and over the top of the head and down through the nose and the tongue and you always put the tongue on the roof of your mouth so that it'll complete the circuit down the front channel and circulate up the back get the picture here I hope so because you're really going to enjoy this if you ever get to that point where you're actually able to put this into practice because like I tell, tell people, if they only knew what they're missing or if they only knew what they could add to their relationship, I try to tell some people about this and they go, oh, I have that with my boyfriend or whatever. No, they don't. <laughs> they think that, that because they have an orgasm, okay, and it's great, but that's what it is. No, this is way, way, way beyond that. Okay, a hundred million times beyond that. So you can imagine how good it is, or how good it feels, or whatever. But don't mistake having good sex with your partner for, oh, the, yeah, I do Tantra. No, you don't. You have to practice this stuff and meditate and get other things that I just mentioned into a working mode, okay, an activated mode. And it takes years sometimes. Some people can do it. Some people, people have spontaneous awakenings. What can I say? They're predisposed to it. So to take it another step here, when you're practicing yoga or union with your the higher energies, you can do what they call an inner tantra, which means that each of us, like take a man for existence, has a male side and a female side and a yin or a yang side. The yin being female, the yang being male. And these two energies within oneself can be wove together up the spine in what we call alchemical or an alchemical process. Inner alchemy okay, is what it's called in Taoist tradition. Inner alchemy. And it's done through breathing, saying a mantra, and a mantra is a word or sound that you say to yourself. And getting this energy to move and to actually get married inside yourself. Your inner feminine and your inner masculine. Okay? You have to do this and recognize this before you can do this with your partner. And we all have this inner beautiful energy male and female, all of us, whether we're a female or a male. If we're female, we have the male energy or the yang. And if we're male, we have the yin energy, which is female energy. So it's a matter of recognizing us. And until you recognize that, I tell people it's probably going to be dubious as to whether you even understand your partner or not. Unless you understand that which is within you, okay? Now let's, let's start getting a little deeper here into this with, a, with what we call a sexual partner or your twin soul or whoever. When you both practice these, this type of yoga, this type of meditation, it's incredible because when you get together in union, sacred union. And I'll flash a little picture here from my book Emergence. So in my book Emergence, the twin souls practice this. You notice the aura of energy around them, okay? And this certain position that they're in 
facilitates this kind of thing and when they get together this energy circulates up the male's spine over the top of the head down through the nose you touch tongues it goes over her head and down her spine and around and circulates and circulates and circulates and you can reverse it and you can do all kinds of things with this energy until your crown chakras up here just pop open just a massive tingling and a tingling of the whole body and it isn't as like the normal orgasm if you want to call it that which happens just down in this area but it's a whole body whole aura whole being orgasm or orgasm might not even be the elevation it's pretty hard to to, to describe okay but it's I tell people it's kind of like white water rafting over Niagara Falls so now we'll go to this picture which is an ancient, ancient artifact which shows what I'm talking about here. And it's from India or the Indus Valley, which is ancient, ancient practices. Okay, now here we have a vessel. This would be the feminine. This would be called the yoni, okay, or the female sex organ and then this portion of it here of course would be the phallic symbol or the lingam and then here we have the two energies combined rising up the spine just as I described so this is an ancient artifact that shows this very thing this is an ancient technique yogic technique okay been around a long long time just like yoga or any other martial arts anything now there's different techniques that can be used to facilitate this extreme experience of in raising the consciousness this way and one of the things is breathing that energy up your spine. And so you have to imagine, I'll give you just a taste here of how you can do this. You have to imagine that there's a straw going from the tailbone on up to your crown chakra up here. And with the tongue on the roof of your mouth, you breathe in. and you picture sucking up some kind of warm liquid or cool liquid whatever you prefer and so that's called chi or prana and you move that energy up the kundalini energy up by imagining it up by moving it up with your mind and you can actually move energy around your body with your mind so you imagine sucking up that energy through a straw with the tongue on your roof of your mouth so that the circuit will be completed and you kind of from the back of your throat make an H-U-H -H sound ha like okay so you're breathing in tongue on the roof of your mouth imagining the liquid come up over the top of your head but in order to do this Again, it would be good to practice yoga first for however long it takes, okay? You don't just jump into this stuff with your partner right away and think, oh, yeah, this is going to happen like right now. And again, I have to laugh at people that go, yeah, that happens to me and my boyfriend or me and my girlfriend. We do that. They have no idea. So when you get into this whole body orgasm after this thing is like flowing and the aura is expanding and the energy, the room is just lighting up. 
If you want to use that term, oh my God, this would be the place to use it. Because not only can you do this within yourself and get that same feeling, but you can do it with a partner. And that is the ultimate in a relationship. And if you don't have that in your relationship, I feel sorry for you. You should learn it. That should be your number one priority. Now you'll see in some relationships that some person might go for this and the other person might think it's weird. Well, then you have to make a decision. And that's why I say sometimes when I see these people on Facebook or wherever, I'm in a relationship. Well, what if you meet somebody that knows this stuff and you want to learn it or you know this stuff already? But you can't get your partner to do it. Does that mean you got to stay with them for life? Does that mean you can't grow as a person? Does that mean that you're stuck in some kind of quagmire or self-imposed limitations on your life? That's up to you. Personally, I'm a free spirit, okay? So if I'm walking around the planet and I run into, you know, that yin energy, that female energy that knows this stuff, and believe me, very few people have a clue about this stuff. They don't know it or they wouldn't be asking me about it. And to have sexual union or yoga union any other way with your mate almost is to me is uh, it's a non-starter let's put it that way so it's a non-starter so I was talking about being a loner the other day okay and, I, and that's one of the reasons is because it's hard to find somebody out there that even, even the people that are doing yoga and teaching yoga and, you know, the Hatha yoga, this has to do with the Hatha yoga and the inner yoga, which is the Kriya or movement of energy or Kundalini yoga, meditation, whatever. And I'll just be truthful, you know, I've been practicing this since 86 or something. And it started with just yoga and it started with moving the energy around and then, but to find somebody that you, that is compatible with you or wants to learn this. And there's nothing like naughty or dirty or whatever these people conjure up in their minds. Okay. This is a sacred act, and if you can't get that, then bye. See you later. And it's all about energy, and I keep saying it's all about energy. Okay. And it is all about energy. Hell, you can stand in the line at the bank and hook up with somebody on an energy level and they don't even know it or they'll feel it and go, oh, what's that or whatever. And it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. You're not taking their energy, you're giving them energy. So, if you want this in your life, then you have to find somebody that is compatible with you. That's really difficult because there's not too many people. Like I say, even the yoga classes you see out in the park, half of them don't get this. The teacher might get a glimpse of it. You have to ask the teacher. So it's 
people think that yoga, you know, when they get out in the park and they get their little mats down and they lay down and they do all these positions, they think it's just about exercise and keeping the body fit. Well, yes, it's about that, but it's much, much, much more than that. And they never get taught that. It's not something they teach people. They don't want to broach that area. They don't want to get into touchy areas. Some people have problems with, you know, this. Because they think it's too esoteric or too weird or too... And actually, it's the most beautiful thing you can do. Me just talking about it right now, I can feel my chakra, boom, it just popped open right then. You could just talk about it and the energy starts flowing within you. It starts flowing in you. Okay? And it starts doing its own thing. And like I said before, you don't need to really find another person. You can do it within yourself. You can have the male-female energies within yourself. It's called an internal romance, I call it. Only it's a beautiful spiritual thing and until I find that on the outside somewhere out here with a female that's in shape that does yoga that does all this stuff like I do um, I'm not gonna commit myself to anything but yet if I find that and I think that that's possible I'll pursue it Okay, and I know a few people right now that do this. So, anyway, I won't even go there, but... Like I say, even the people that do it don't, don't get it. Okay, and in my book, Emergence, okay, which is something that I guess I should flash on the screen right now. I'll put that up there real quick. We have the Twin Souls, which is Natalie, or Wikvaya is her Hopi name, one who brings, and Thunder, Anamiki, who meet, and they are into this from the very beginning because they both experienced it it's a predestined thing and they had ancient lives together and so that's what this book is all about it's about that and a lot of other things worked in there and a lot a lot of other techniques a lot of other viewpoints a lot of shamanistic stuff that's why I say this book is like a hidden it's a novel, but it's a hidden shamanistic uh, text if you read it in the right way. So as a novel, it's entertaining, but it's also very informative, just like this video is informative. And I consider this video almost like a webinar or a, let's call it a youtube -inar or whatever. And it's instructive. And I taught you some very deep things today. And if you listen to it and practice it and think about it, you could have a spontaneous awakening. Or you might, if you're already doing yoga, you might start feeling things that you never felt before. And like I said, when somebody is in my presence, I can transmit this energy directly to them or a feeling of energy just by a hand clasp or by a kiss or by just standing next to them. It's a beautiful thing to feel the energy of life, to feel the prana, the chi that flows through life and to take that and convert it into some beautiful thing that raises your consciousness because when that crown chakra opens like mine is right now 
the Hopi say that's opening the door to the Creator and talking to the Creator. Okay, so this is something that is beneficial to you to learn. It's beneficial to learn. And I don't know what I will entitle this <laughs> video. Probably just sacred sex or sacred sex, you know, a doorway to enlightenment or something of that nature. Because that's what it is. And like I say in my book, you know, Thunder and Natalie are very young, but they are ancient souls. And I put the point across that it's just not too young people going at it but it's a deep understanding of what their role is in life and what their purpose is it's a great novel and it should be a movie actually it should be a movie I've tried to talk to people about this a lot of people told me that should be a movie some people told me I, there's parts in there that made them cry but it was so beautiful. So, and then you go on and you see some of these movies on Netflix or something and the, they got the weirdest, strangest stuff on there. You have, have to search for hours just to find something that's palatable. <laughs> Trust me. Or mind stimulating or something, enlightening on some level, or even, you know, moving your heart. But, it's a mess out there, and people should should learn this stuff and she should see movies about this kind of thing because it's the purest kind of love because not only does your crown chakra open up, but you got that chakra in your heart that's opening, and you get a whole different perspective on sexual energy. You don't look at it as just, something that's used to procreate and have millions of babies on the planet. It's not just about that, okay? It's about, this is way beyond the normal type of relationship you would have, marriage or relationship or whatever. This is a sacred union, sacred with the higher energy, which you could call God or whatever you want to call it. So, try it. You'll like it. It is like white water rafting over Niagara Falls as far as, you know, if you just wanted to put it on a sexual level. But man, it's, it's incredible. And this is just one technique that can be learned. There's all kinds of different techniques, you know, about other areas, but basically it's all the same. You're just using energy, okay? You're using this, this prana, this chi that flows in the ether. Okay, we can't see the ether. It's all around us. It's like a viscous, liquid, <laughs> invisible chi, energy, okay? It's not like when you drink an energy drink, it's pure, okay? And I can sometimes connect with people on the other side of the planet because there is no distance with energy. And Einstein said it, the time-space continuum thing. There really is no such thing as time or space. I can be right next to a person and be a thousand miles away. It's a hard concept to grasp, isn't it? So anyway, I, I guess I covered everything here that I, I wanted to cover. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy this video, and I usually do videos about things going on around the world or other matters, but this is strictly spiritual. 
and this can be combined with other spiritual techniques and correlated with other spiritual techniques just like even martial arts or tracking or anything because it's all about energy and I'll say that a thousand times until people understand it that's why you feel bad sometimes when you're in a room with somebody that's not letting the energy flow they're they're blocking it and people like to sabotage themselves or close the doors on themselves as far as relationships because of some belief system that they have to stay with somebody the rest of their life regardless of whether they're compatible or not or regardless of whether they know this stuff or not they think they have to stay with that person which is limiting it limits you you don't have to stay with anybody and I'm not advocating people splitting up with their mates or anything I'm just making a true point that if you want to learn this stuff and you want to do this stuff and you know somebody that does this or you're already doing it and you want to hook up with somebody that's doing it so that your consciousness can be raised together then you should do it I don't want to hear this stuff about I'm in a relationship or I'm this or I'm that and I'll be truthful with you I've talked to women that are attracted to me that come on to me on the normal level okay we're talking about kind of a lower level here for some reason and then you know as soon as they do I'll like shoot them this energy okay and then right away when they feel that energy they're like oh wow what's that <laughs> what is that it feels good and then they get scared and they go I'm in a relationship <laughs> it's funny people really limit themselves and I don't care it's like you know that old saying two ships passing in the night you could be perfect for one another and just whoosh, go right by so wake up with that and think about things beyond the mundane you know uh, the mundane sex or the mundane relationship because true love is when you hook up with these chakras in the, the energy channels and you become one a oneness a oneness okay and then that oneness between you becomes oneness with the universe what more beautiful thing could there be there's a great book about this stuff it's called desire I think it's by Odier is the guy's name a Frenchman which I highly recommend it's called desire Tantra most people link desire with oh that's naughty or that's bad or you shouldn't desire well of course you should hello desire is fine if you use it in a sacred manner and the yoginis in the Indus Valley not yogis but women yogis yoginis some of them taught this stuff that's where it came from and Odier I believe his name actually went to India and found a yogini and learned this stuff but you don't need to do that you can learn it right here if you get the right person okay so anyway I, I guess I should leave it there today food for thought from thunder on a very spiritual level and you're, you're either going to get this or you're not going to get it maybe you should rewind the video a couple of times and listen to certain things and if you have questions go to the campfire council which I represent which teaches all kinds of practices like this 
and just meditation and survival and tracking and living with nature and all kinds of things that are beneficial. Go there. Check it out. And if you feel like this video was worth anything, donate. Because even though we're funded, we can use more donations. And pass this video around, share it, give it to your mate, enlighten them. And when you get this video, watch it. With a name like I'm going to put on there, I don't see how anybody could not watch it. But people are strange. Also, my books are on the website, Campfire Council, and Emergence, which is the one I describe, and Listen to the Wind Speak from the Heart, which is a award-winning book. And there's resources on there, and there's a newsletter. And we appreciate the donations we've gotten so far because it's helped. And we're still working through the bureaucracy and other things. In fact, I had to pay more fees last night just to keep this campfire nonprofit charitable organization going. So we need your volunteer, we need your feedback, we need your donations, simple. If you like this kind of stuff, if you like learning this kind of stuff, support it. Because it takes a lot of time and energy for me to do this, number one. You wouldn't believe the time I spend putting together a show, putting together the graphics, distributing it to everybody out there. And even though I do that, they try to suppress it for some reason. A lot of outlets try to suppress it, like Facebook and that. Of course, they suppress everything. Uh, what can I say? Anything that's going to help you, they're going to suppress, or anything that's truth, they're going to suppress. So it would be nice if, if you would help Thunder propagate this kind of thing and get it out there, and get some input going. And I know some people, like I said, that I called, and people that I called, and they don't get back to me. They could help me. Okay. And I will just keep forging ahead until I get that help or something happens or until I'm here, no longer here. But I love all you people and I, you know, it's heart to heart here, okay, from the one eye of the heart. And these are ancient secret traditions. And these traditions exist in a lot of different tribal areas too. So I hope you enjoyed this video and, and I'll say namaste today because that seems appropriate. Until I see you again, this is Thunder. Bye.